Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Do you know a city employee who goes above and beyond providing extraordinary service to Kansas City's residents or businesses? If so, consider nominating him or her for a Rich Knoll Paysetter Award. This award is given to one city employee each month who embodies excellent customer service, communications, partnership, concern for others, and more. To nominate someone, visit kcmo.org slash paysetter. The city's health department is offering free HPV vaccine for young adults between the ages of 19 and 25. This vaccine is delivered in a series of three shots over six months. It can help prevent certain types of cancers. To schedule an appointment, call the health department at 816-513-6152. More than 11,000 residents have signed up to receive Nixle messages from the city. Nixle is a community notification service the city began using more than a year ago to better communicate with residents. Using Nixle, the city sends text and email notifications to subscribers in a very specific area down to the quarter mile. Examples include news about boil orders, road closings, and water main breaks. Individuals may register to receive community notifications by either texting their zip code to the number 888-777, or you can visit kcmo.org slash Nixle, N-I-X-L-E. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. This winter, we have many activities for your whole family planned at our parks and facilities. For example, check out Breakfast with the Beasts on Saturday, February 8th from 10 a.m. to noon at Lakeside Nature Center in Swope Park. This annual event lets children meet some of the beasts living in their own backyards and learn what they like to eat for breakfast. Kids can enjoy breakfast with their favorite beasts, including skunks, eagles, raccoons, and more, all portrayed by volunteers. Families attending can also enjoy crafts, temporary tattoos, and face painting. Learn more at lakesidenaturecenter.org. Looking to do something different to celebrate Valentine's Day? Participate in an old European tradition that's made its way to Kansas City by locking your love to the Old Red Bridge in Minor Park. Couples attach a padlock bearing their names to a bridge, fence, gate, or similar structure to proclaim their unbreakable and everlasting love. Hey Kansas City, my name is Ryan Avery and this is Chelsea Avery. Hello. We are professional speakers and we're in town because we wanted to come and check out this bridge that we found out on this website that's called kcparks.org. We checked it out. We like to do all the different local things in town. We're and from Portland, Oregon. We are right from now, Portland, so Oregon. Visiting from the West Coast. So we decided to add our lock here. We we told each other we'd be married for 93 years. So in 93 years, which would be like 2100, come and check this lock and we'll still be in love. Thank you Kansas City Parks for putting this on. We think it's an amazing tradition and we're excited to continue to come back here and see our lock for many years to come. Visit the Old Red Bridge on Red Bridge Road east of Holmes in South Kansas City on Valentine's Day weekend or anytime to declare your love. The bridge is near the Minor Park Golf Course and spans the Little Blue River. You can also visit lock-its.com to purchase a custom engraved lock with a portion of proceeds supporting KC Parks. Learn more by visiting kcparks.org and searching Love Locks. It's time to think spring. All gardeners are invited to come out to the 2014 Garden Symposium on Friday, February 21st from 10 a.m. to noon at the Loose Park Garden Center and on Saturday, February 22nd from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. Participate in gardening lectures, workshops, and speakers to help make your garden its best ever. For more information, visit gardensymposium.org. Want to reserve a Kansas City Park picnic shelter for a small private gathering? Shelter reservations can be made beginning on Monday, March 3rd. Online reservations, payable by credit card, begin at midnight and walk-ins start at 7 a.m. Shelters are available for rental from May 1st through October 31st. For more information or questions, 
please visit our shelter reservation page at caseyparks.org. Please note that Loose Park Shelter House and Rose Garden reservations can be made at the Loose Park Garden Center only. To make reservations, visit the Garden Center at 51st Street and Mornell Road or call 816-784-5300. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. The KCPD, see, I'm already doing it, the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department is quite fond of using acronyms. And one acronym community groups often hear is CIO, which is Community Interaction Officer. We have seven. East Patrol has Jason Cooley. The community Interaction Officer position provides many opportunities for, for um, the police department to be able to, to help people. More times than not, it's just a positive experience and it allows us to engage the community, um, break down barriers, um, earn trust, earn friendships, and uh, just, just try to make communities safer. And it's about relationships, partnerships, and communication. CIOs uh, offer an opportunity uh, for direct engagement with the community that goes beyond just the typical call for service. Metro Patrol, John Trainer. I think CIO position is important. Uh, it gives the um, homes associations, businesses, uh, citizens uh, a contact person, uh, even to ask what happened on their block to um, uh, what can I do about crime in my neighborhood. We uh, bring things to the table, talk about them, work things out, problem solving. Um, uh, there's just a lot of people in the city that uh, want to help. Central Patrol, Jim Shriver. The, uh, the CIO serves as a critical link between uh, the citizens of Kansas City uh, and the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. In Central Patrol Division, I think we got some of the best groups uh, in the entire Kansas City metropolitan area. A uh, very close group. Uh, they actually you know, become family uh, instead of just uh, residents. South Patrol, Mike Hammer. It seems like each day there's new challenges, uh, different situations the community comes to me with. It, I, end up scratching my head wondering, okay, how are we going to handle this? How are we going to combat this issue that this group is encountering? Uh, one, we're out there in the community. We're, we're viewed as the officer friendly. Uh, kind of the liaison between the community and the police department. A lot of people have questions. They want to get in touch with different units. Uh, they might not have any access or never you know, been in contact with them, like for them come to a picnic. How do I get in touch with this this group. I just kind of play the, the liaison. North Patrol, Paul Burkhalter. It's, it's, it's exactly what I wanted to do uh, since, I, uh, since, since the beginning. Uh, to work with the community, to uh, deal with the issues at hand, and uh, absolutely love it. Up north, uh, we have great uh, communication with our HOAs, our uh, community at hand. Uh, the communication between North Patrol and the citizens is, 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 has been great. A good day when I don't get any complaints about speed bumps. <laughs> Show Creek, Rick Cartwright. It's very much rewarding. It gives me the opportunity to interact with the public and be that liaison between the public and what the department can do for them. I do think it's very important that the department have community interaction officers just because the title itself says that we are ones that work with the public and that we want to interact with them and address their problems and, and let them know what the police department can do for them and what they can do also to obviously help themselves. And finally me, Shelly Gaddis. We spoke with CIO coordinator Captain Chris Sicoli. The, uh, the community interaction officers are vitally important to our department and to the communities they serve. They have to know the dynamics of each neighborhood they work with. Um, they have to know the dynamics of the division they work within. Um, they have to keep current on what's happening within the department and within the community. Um, they are the go-to person for those neighborhoods. We have a, a great mix between people that have been a CIO for many, many years to people that are just starting as a CIO. They seem to work together very well as a group. They share information. CIOs should never be used as an emergency contact. They are strictly an after-the-fact resource, um, either to find out what was happening in your neighborhood 
or to provide intelligence information. I think a lot of people, not only in the community, but also a lot of officers forget the CIOs have a lot of wonderful contacts in their neighborhoods, and they receive an awful lot of intelligence about who is doing what and where. It does take a very special type of person to be a CIO. You have to be somebody that is outgoing, that is willing to meet new people, that can work with very limited supervision. At the same time, you know, the department has to trust them that they're going to follow the department guidelines and, and put out the department viewpoints. And I'm very pleased with the current caliber of CIOs that we have. Chief Forte often says relationships mean everything. As CIOs, we reach out to businesses, schools, faith-based organizations, home associations, and community groups. We keep the public informed on what the police department does and why we do it. We assist in neighborhoods setting up their block watch programs, we listen to complaints and suggestions, and we answer questions. Our connections range from the city council to state representatives and senators. People often say, where's a cop when you need one? Well, CIOs may be the easiest to find. Check us out at www.kcpd.org. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week.